So we've already checked the engine oil and gearbox oil as well as the generator oil. Now I'm just kind of running through the systems, looking at like the tanks, switching over from shore power to generator power, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really important before you leave the dock, anytime you go sailing to make sure you're properly prepared. These are the things I've learned with a lifetime of being on the water and sailing. And it's that kind of experience that can't be taught, only learned over time. Today we're on board second wave of Lagoon 620, which is the culmination of 40 years of yacht ownership experience by her seller that's included performance monohulls, other large catamarans, multiple Pacific crossings, Atlantic crossings, etc., etc. This is the culmination of that knowledge. And today we're going to take you around this boat and show you why she is different than any other Lagoon 62 currently on the market. My name is Wiley Sharp with Catamaran Central. Let's go sailing and see what she's all about. So like we talked about in the intro, the seller of Second Waved is an experienced sailor and yachtsman with multiple Pacific crossings and Atlantic crossings. So for him, an important part of being a blue water boat is having an extensive sail inventory and being a good sailing boat. His previous catamaran was one of the older Sunreef 62s that he sailed throughout the Pacific. And he just wanted something that sailed a little bit better, a little bit quicker. And he was more than pleasantly surprised with the performance of this Lagoon 62 that I would argue is probably the best sailing boat in that 60 foot cruising catamaran space. So what makes Second Wave a better sailing boat than the average Lagoon 62 out there? It would definitely have to be a sail inventory. Not only does he have a code zero on his bowsprit, but he's also got a massive asymmetrical spinnaker. He's got the Genoa and stay sail both on a power furler, a square top main and a carbon fiber boom. In talking with the owner, I asked him about his sail inventory and what he liked and what he didn't like. And a lot of people don't actually use the stay sail. He found it to be one of the most beneficial sails on the boat for sailing upwind in heavy conditions. Much better sail shape than a furl Genoa on the furler. You've heard me say this time and time again, the importance of having oversized ground tackle. And on this particular boat, not only do they put a large oversized anchor, but they also upsize the chain, making it a far more comfortable boat at anchor. And all this extra anchor and extra weight in the chain is easily managed by the Lumar electric windlass with chain counter. And then a couple of small details that only come from experience is the owner of this boat had a cover made for the chain run, which keeps the Ford exponentially cleaner than the normal Lagoon 620. If you do get anything up here from anchoring though, it's easily washed away with the wash down pump here on the foredeck. Over here on the starboard side, while it looks like a deck wash down connection, it's actually a quick connect for an air hose, making it very easy to inflate your fenders, stand up paddle boards, or any other type of inflatable you may have on board the boat. Now there's no seating arrangement up here from the factory setup. The owner of the boat found it more than comfortable using bean bags up here, but this is a very functional space where you can easily turn it into a forward lounge. Over here in the starboard bow, we have the first of two four peaks. On this side, it's set up as a sail locker, line storage, and fender storage. And it's quite cavernous with plenty of space for additional cruising equipment. And then over here on the port bow, it's actually set up as a crew cabin. So if you were putting this boat into charter, you'd have a place for some of the crew to sleep here port forward. We're gonna check out the generator room next, but before we do that, it's worth noting this custom stainless antique step up to the flybridge. From my experience with the Lagoon 620, it's either a slide down and a scramble up, or you've gotta go all the way around to get to the foredeck. So having these steps here and this grab rail makes it a much easier boat to run from a crew standpoint. And underfoot, we have the generator compartment, which houses the upgraded 19 kilowatt Onan generator, as well as all of the Victron chargers and inverters, giving you just a really neat, easily worked in mechanical space. Let's go ahead and make our way down the port weather deck into the cockpit. But before we get in there, let's talk about what's going on here on the port transom. So underfoot, we have the first of two mechanical spaces on board with the upgraded Volvo D3 150s 
paired to folding props. In this engine room, we also have the dive compressor, as well as the hydraulics for the tender lift, which is the upgraded tender lift housing a high field tender powered by a 40 horsepower Honda four stroke. Back here, we also have the flat mounted high speed Starlink, which is an absolute game changer for anybody that wants to go cruising. We also have two swim ladders, one over here on port side, one to starboard and a hot cold shower to rinse off after going for a dive or a swim. And over here in the starboard engine room, we have the water maker, the air conditioning chiller system, as well as the barbecue grill, which is plumbed with its own propane supply. We've also got a life sling and the e -perb permanently affixed into the extrusion here, as well as the second hot cold shower. Anytime you're on a boat, the cockpit is kind of like that open kitchen in a modern home. It's where people congregate. It's where you're gonna dine. It's where you're gonna sit back and read a book. It's where you're just gonna relax and enjoy being with your family and friends while on the water. A couple of the areas that I particularly love on this boat are the day bed all the way starboard outboard. And let's just talk about this beautiful wood table with L-shaped settee. This is where I'm gonna enjoy all of my meals and you know, on a day like today, it's a little bit rainy, and so having a full enclosure for this space kept it absolutely bone dry. Adjacent to this dining area here on the starboard side, we have the cockpit bar module, which not only has storage, but an ice maker and a refrigerator and a wet bar that's neatly hidden below this countertop. One of the things you always struggle with on a boat is where to store your dive tanks. And so this custom dive rack puts three bottles very conveniently located without being in the way. And all the way aft, we have this large full beam bench seat with tons of storage down below. But I think this is a perfect place to talk about the fact that all of the soft goods on this boat were custom done aftermarket. And so they're extra thick and very comfortable. Let's go ahead and make our way up to my favorite place on the boat, the flybridge. First thing I want to point out here is the electric companionway, which allows you to completely close this space off from the cockpit, giving you very good weather protection if you're out at anchor in inclement weather. From here, we're going to make our way over to the starboard helm. I absolutely love having the twin helms aft on this flybridge. Not only does it give you just a large open feel with great visibility of the entertaining area here, but it's incredibly functional. At the flybridge, we have an oversized BNG chart plotter that's integrated with the autopilot AIS, as well as the radar on board the boat, as well as a multifunction display here, giving you data like wind, speed, depth. And outboard of that, we also have a separate independent BNG autopilot control. Now you can control and get all this data from the chart plotter, but having multiple screens is really, really nice just from a, a ease of use and getting the information you need when you need it. Now, there's a lot I like about this helm. I love the electronics package. I think that the Essence version of the Lagoon 620 helm is just a really nice upgrade over the earlier hulls. I love the fact that we've got great visibility forward, great visibility aft. I like having the throttles on the outboard side, as well as a bow thruster and a bank of rocker switches controlling a number of important systems that you need to be able to operate from the helm. Now, speaking about you know the helm and operating the boat, we have everything over here on the starboard helm over on the port side helm. So whether you're going port side to starboard side to a dock, you're on a port tack or a starboard tack, you always have an excellent line of sight. And then one other small detail item that makes this boat very easy to handle is the yacht controller remote. This essentially allows you to control the bow thruster and engine controls from anywhere on the boat. So if you are sailing this boat as a couple or as owner operators, it makes those stressful moments of coming into and out of a slip that much easier. Continuing forward from there on the starboard side, we have this nice settee. And this is a good example to really highlight the custom aftermarket cushions found throughout the exterior of the boat. They're significantly thicker like we talked about down below in the cockpit, which is very comfortable and for me personally, having this backrest forward of the helm, that's where I would be hanging out when underway on watch at night during the daytime. That's where I'm gonna be. I also love having a full-size table up here on the flybridge. I could see Laura and myself enjoying most of our meals sitting up here, be it breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's just a very nice, sturdy table that was custom built for this boat. 
And one more quality of life option found up here on the Flybridge is the top loading drink refrigerator, which means a cold beer or water is never that far away. From there, we're gonna dive right into what this boat is all about, which is sailing. So like we already talked about, we we're up on the foredeck. This boat is equipped with a square top mainsail, a stay sail and Genoa, both on powered furlers, a code zero and an asymmetrical spinnaker. I don't think there's another 620 on the market with this extensive a sail inventory. Now, all of these sails are easily controlled through push button sailing with a series of Harkin 80 self tailing two speed electric winches, which are all controlled by foot switches below the winch. We also have switches for the power furler, both on the port side here by my left knee, as well as over here on the starboard side. Another nice thing for the line handler when going through any sailing maneuver is having the B&G repeaters just forward so they can see wind angle as well as wind speed. And so rounding up the flybridge is definitely where the sun worshipers on board are gonna wanna hang out, which is the four day bed that's got a great view of the sails as well as excellent exposure for anybody wanting to sunbathe. I always have the conversation with prospective buyers, galley up versus galley down. The Lagoon 620 is available in both arrangements. And today we're gonna to show you all the benefits of a galley down arrangement on a Lagoon 620. I mean, is this not the kind of place you wanna come into after a long day of sailing, diving, fishing, and just being out on the water? Before we talk about the obvious guest relaxation areas on board second wave, let's talk about the forward facing nav station. So here's center line, we've got an excellent workstation with storage on either sides, but let's talk about what is on the actual nav station. So the seller of this boat equipped it for blue water sailing. He's done a lot of ocean crossing, particularly Pacific crossings. And so a good nav station was very important to him. So on the port side of the nav station, we have the touchscreen EPLEX control module. The EPLEX on this boat is the later or second generation version of the EPLEX, which tends to be more reliable than some of the earlier EPLEX systems. And from here, you can control everything from generator to on and off, your lighting, electronics, et cetera, et cetera. Adjacent to that, we have the oversized upgraded BNG chart plotter, as well as an autopilot control. So for those inclement weather passages, or if it's just cold out at night, you've got a great place to keep an eye on everything going on around you. A fundamental trait of all Lagoon catamarans is just ease of operation. So we've already talked about the EPLEX system, but below this cabinet here, we have the breaker panel, as well as water maker control, generator remote start, and behind these panels, we have all the fuses and breakers, making it a very easy boat to troubleshoot on the electrical front. From here, we're gonna start looking at the living spaces in the salon. Over here on the starboard side, we have two high-low tables. Right now, they're in the up position and coffee table configuration, but you can easily sit eight people here for interior dining, although I think most of your meals will be enjoyed out in the cockpit. But when it's hot or rainy, or you've just had a long day in the sun, it's kind of a nice place to eat your dinner. So in addition to just being a great settee on the starboard side, there's also tons of storage underneath the settee over here, as well as on the port side too, and underneath the built-in ottoman. We've also got a high-low television here that makes this the perfect space for movie night. Just to reiterate the attention to detail the owner of Second Wave has put into this boat, he has covers for all the interior and exterior seating areas for when they're in delivery mode. On our way down the port aft companionway, before we check out the galley, I just wanna show this custom wine cabinet with magnetic wine and tumblers in it. We're gonna make our way down the port aft companionway into the galley down arrangement. There's so much to talk about here in this chef grade galley. A couple of my favorite features though are the aft cockpit access, which not only makes meal service an absolute breeze, but it's also incredibly convenient for when you're loading provisions before a long passage. A few noteworthy features here in the galley is not only do we have a washing machine that comes standard from Lagoon, but they also put in a full size dryer, making turn down service and laundry on this boat a breeze. We've got all the appliances you'd expect, like a full-size refrigerator freezer, a four-burner propane cooktop, and a convection oven. There is also more than adequate storage for all of your plates, pots, pans, and provisions, meaning that the galley will always be nice and tidy with a little bit of planning. Continuing our way forward from there, we get to what we would consider the crew cabin, which is a bunk room on this boat. 
The owner did a couple of little details in here that make a big difference for the livability of the crew. First thing is they changed all the fixtures from lagoons and all the poles for the cabinets to a softer pole versus a sharp edge. Paying homage to this boat's Bordeaux pedigree, he also had custom wine storage built in the bilge of the crew cabin. Continuing from the bunk room, we've got the crew head, which is also accessible from the port forward companionway, making it the perfect day head if you're not using this boat with crew. We can access this port forward stateroom through the crew head, or we're gonna pop up the aft companionway through the salon to the port forward companionway into the first of two guest staterooms. We have more than ample storage throughout the first of two guest staterooms, both on the inboard and outboard side, as well as under the athwart ship queen size berth. And as you already saw in the crew cabin and in this cabin, it's worth mentioning that all of the linens on board second wave were custom ordered and fitted for this boat. Continuing forward from the cabin, we get into the first guest head, which has a separate shower stall and plenty of storage on the inboard side. Coming up the port forward companionway, we're gonna come across the salon into what I would consider the VIP stateroom. The reason I would call this the VIP stateroom is it's got its own private access through the starboard forward companionway and additional storage not found in the port forward cabin. Other than that, the two staterooms are very similar in size and layout. From there, we're gonna make our way to the starboard aft companionway into the owner's stateroom, which is a layout that really defined large luxury catamaran living in a new era. One thing worth mentioning on our way down into the owner's stateroom, and it's true with all of the staterooms, the owner being an experienced yachtsman added additional grab rails going down all the companionways, making it far easier and safer for transiting these staircases. Moving all the way forward in the owner's stateroom, we've got tons of storage along the bulkhead and hanging lockers and closets. We have an athwart ship berth that's just flooded with natural light from the adjacent opening window. Continuing aft from there, we've got a workstation as well as a settee aft of that. From there, we make our way into the owner's head, which is a really nice layout with a separate water closet a shower on the outboard aft portion of it, and Jack and Jill sinks on the inboard side. And like the galley, you can also access the stern of the boat through the sliding glass door aft, giving you instant access to the water. I can't think of a better way to wake up at anchor than walking right from my berth out the door and diving into the Caribbean Sea. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the time on the water today as much as I did. We could not have asked for nicer conditions out there. We're gonna put the full spec sheet to this well-equipped boat in the description down below. If you have any questions on Second Wave, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, and let's figure out a time to get you on board and show you why she's different than any other Lagoon 620 currently on the market.